Welcome to the Shogun Bar, and once again this evening I'm joined by a couple of our players, not in the squad tonight, Andy Hazel and Tim Taylor. Both, of course, played a very prominent role in that quite amazing matchup to Welford Road on Saturday. For the last couple of weeks, or the last couple of matches of this season, I don't want to do all the asking the questions, so if anybody out there has a question to ask, please ask it. Stick up your hand when I ask and I'll bring the microphone to you. Now if when we do normal answers, questions and answers, nobody asks a question until we're just about to go home and then a hundred hands go up. So after that fabulous match, two of the players who took part are here. I'll ask you for questions in a minute, but let's just uh, welcome Andy Hazel and Tim Taylor. Andy, you had a bit of treatment on Saturday on the pitch. You went off looking absolutely knackered. Are you fit and will we see you on Sunday? Uh, two, my God, yeah. Um, no, I'm... Uh, I'm... Hello? I, I was pretty tired, sort of, in the game. I um, played for a few weeks, so it, it, it took its toll really, and it was, a, it was a pretty physical game and pretty loose, as I saw you sitting on the TV. Was that the overall impression that, uh, you, you know, in certain quarters, our defence, Leicester's defence has been questioned? Was it just a, an attacking situation, nice weather, nice pitch? Um, and both sides had a go. Obviously it was uh, helter-skelter right from the first whistle. Yeah, I mean, we, we worked on our defence in the week prior to, to the game. Um, we didn't want to leave that many tries, really. Uh, but when you've got people like Tua Lang, you run into holes. If, if he catches an arm, he's going to go through the arms, tackles, really. So, yeah, we, there was a lot of new combinations, so that makes a difference sort of to the, to the game and, and just, just for the partnerships, really. Tim, you came on when, unfortunately, Oli Morgan did his shoulder in again, slotted into fullback, which you did at Exeter and one or two other places. Is that a position you've played in a number of times, and is it really interchangeable with fly half? Um, when I was younger, I played fullback uh, a fair bit. Um, and that was a while ago. Uh, really been concentrating on fly half in recent years, but um, in training we've always been filling in the fullback just in case you know Forrest is going down because he's really the only standout 15 we have. But um, likes of Freddie and Sharps and Royce and Aiden are in that position as well. So it's just keep keep working, keep um, filling in there in training just in case. Uh, on Saturday. What was the feeling on the pitch when um, you were holding out for the two bonus points? What was the feeling when you actually saw Ellie bursting away? Some for relief, elation or what? Tim, if you like. Yeah, a bit, bit, of, bit of both really. Um, it just uh, would have been nice to get a bit close to the post for, uh, for Freddie, but um, uh, he did a good job with that conversion over. And, uh, he, he had a great game with uh, Ellie throughout the whole, whole 80 minutes. So, yeah. Well, right, anybody want to ask any questions of these two lads whilst I'm here? As I thought, no. Shy, are we? So, Andy, you played Saturday. Today's only Tuesday. Can you fill us in with what happens to you guys um, in, in between? Is there training? Is it just rest or what do you do? Um, yeah, we've, we've been training Sunday. We went to the Sporter to swim pool by the light flash. Um, Monday, we come back here, we did two sessions, uh, one in the morning on defence, um, one in the afternoon on units, sort of forwards did line outs, did back smooth. So we've, we've been always, so we've had a bit of training, but it's, it's quite low key this week. Um, it's, it's nowhere near the intensity we normally train at, obviously, because of the three games in a week. So, so do, does it make it easier or harder that we're uh, three matches in a week, which we accept is very difficult to turn around, but we're in what basically is early summer, it must be draining just training in hot weather like that. So is it easier to play three matches now with dry grounds, or would you rather have three matches in the middle of the winter when everybody else is slowed down? Um, I think all the boys prefer to train in the sun, actually. That's the worst gets hot. 
in Wimbledon like you at least. So it's, there's no good time to have three games in a week really, uh, especially the intensity. The games are, you know, you've got top three teams, Leicester, Northampton and Saracen, so they're pretty tough games. So it's, it's, it's not ideal, um, but, you know, we sort of reviewed everything, all, all our food, everything like that has been reviewed, so we're getting the right sort of stuff in. So there's a professional approach going back to back to back, so hopefully we've got the bases covered. Right, well let's talk about Northampton. Tim, Northampton have named the side which, in a way, could be compared to the side that Gloucester named to go to Leicester. Is that alone, having done the Leicester experience, not any possible complacency out to the lads who will be taking the field tonight? Uh, no, no, we, we were talking yesterday, especially in the uh, facts meetings, um, how we've just got to go out and go as hard as we can. The few of their players have got uh, like the correct teams, I think, in the uh, centre is quite a good ball player and good kicker, so we're going to have to uh, keep an eye on him. But, uh, you know, they've, they've still got a very strong back line, a very strong pack as well, so it's going to be just as tough as you know, as any other side. So. Anybody want to ask a question yet? Sorry lads, this could be anything from your end, as you went to. Right, what's the question? I'd like to ask Andy, what prediction he's got for the uh, Northampton fans to, to noise? Very well back. Now I'm been predicting a gloss to win. Um, you know, yesterday, like Timmy said, we talked about their team. Um, no, no way taking that lightly. They've got a lot there, of course, choked players, if you like, on the bench. Um, but we're all too well. If you under to face somebody, what can happen? But I'm going to go for a sort of 25-10 win for up today. There is a prediction. Any more questions? It must be burning ambition to ask a question of one of these lads. There is another gentleman. Keep it clean, sir. I'd just like to know, um, with the, the harder, firmer grounds now, faster grounds, how much more difficult does that make defending? Tim? Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah, a bit, a bit more difficult, um, just because people can hold their feet a lot easier and uh, use, their, use their footwork. And if you get a one-on-one -on -one with someone, it's a lot harder than if it's in the wet, so you tend to have a bit more time. Um, but for, our, for the back line of the team we have, I suppose, it really does suit us. We have so much, so much pace all throughout the whole team. Um, it really does help the uh, third crowd, yeah. Any more for any more? Or are we back to me? No help. Come on over. I think this can be too much to Quite often see the players, the, um, the players can get on the pitch, you know, the games. I see them warming down after matches, but when you, you play the full game, walk down after matches, we don't actually see you come back on the pitch. Um, we don't sort of come back out onto the pitch, if you like, like some teams do. We normally back into the changing room and we normally have a five minute ice bath. So I'd rather warm down outside for a moment. Um, <laughs> but we normally do that and then the next day after we played in the morning, we'll all meet up and we'll do a 20 minute cycle and a swim the next day. So we normally do it the day after really. Right, let, I'll come back to the supporters in a moment. Um, Tim, do we have an attitude in the squad now that's saying we're in a great position, well, let's have a go and win in this Premiership? Um, well, yeah, definitely. We've, uh, that's been our mindset the whole year. Um, we set some goals in pre-season. One was to win somewhere, which we've done. The other was to uh, get the top four place, which we're all trapped to do at the moment. Um, yeah, definitely through the whole team that we can go out there and win Premiership. And Tim, if we do win tonight, with Saracens coming up on Sunday, they then finish at Harlot wins, we're at home to sail. Second place is still possible, isn't it? Um, yeah, definitely. I think we're only a couple of points behind Saracens, so um, they're playing very good with the moment, and um, so it's going to be a uh, Tough game down there on Sunday, uh, especially with the two games that we've just had. Uh, definitely, yeah, uh, going down looking for that win again. Push up that home Sunday, yeah. Andy, we Saracens on Sunday. Um, to my mind, 
along with Adam Spark, the worst friend in the Premiership. Is there much of a difference playing to empty stands and on a football pitch to what there is, you know, the Leicester matches, New, Newport, uh, sorry, uh, Northampton or playing here? Are football pitches that more difficult to play on? Um, I mean, the, the actual pitch is really not at Saracens, so playing wise, the boys enjoy actually playing on it. So, sorry for the spectators and all the commotions that go on, but no, it's a nice pitch to play on and it doesn't really matter. As soon as the game starts, you sort of blank out all the noise anyway, really, um, especially away. So, it's, it's, it's just another game, really. I know some people say, what's well, different about playing away? We just try to play our normal game. Um, but sometimes things don't go your way, maybe there's a bad breath and things like that, so we've just got to concentrate on our own performance. So, the match at Saracens could determine whether we finish second or third. Does it matter to you if you are away, whether you get uh, Leicester or Saracens? Um, I suppose if, if you want to win the Premiership title, you've got to be able to beat anyone, really. Um, so that's, that's the way I think about it. Um, you can't really be another one if you want to be the best. So that's the sort of attitude we've got to take, really. And uh, hopefully, you know, we've, we've got a big game tonight that we've got to cross from. And then we'll look to Saracens, because Brian, uh, Brian gets pretty annoyed now when we start looking forward. <laughs> so, just look on for tonight first. Anybody else want to ask these questions? Anybody? You on another one? My God, you're, you can come every week. I know that the uh, players have played lots of money, but how many have actually decided to tip the balance that they know that the Gloucester fans are behind them and it's made them sign for the next season? Um, I think when you've got a stadium that you really enjoy playing in, it makes a massive difference. Um, for the sort of fit for a player, the pinnacle is your home game if you like. Um, so if you know you've got a home stadium that you love coming to, the fantastic crowd, it, it, it does make a massive difference. Um, personally for me, <laughs> I've never played in the house, so it's hard for me to say, you know, so I've, I've been lucky just to be here all the time, but it does it does make a difference. Both coming from other clubs, you know, big club, they come and they say they really enjoy the match day atmosphere and it gets them up for the game. Well, Tim, you recent signing for Gloucester, well, not too recent, but uh, certainly more recent than Andy. Um, did you have a knowledge of what it was like for me to be here before you came, that the support was great and everything else? Uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, heard about the shed and um, from a couple of the mates that have been down here with different teams and played here. They've always said it's the best, best, best ground to come play at. Um, it's certainly one of the best places I've ever played. I mean, the atmosphere is just great this afternoon. Even tonight, packed out some other trees and so it's just like, it's a brilliant, yeah. Andy, can I finish with you? Um, don't take this in the wrong way, but you've been here a number of years, one of the older players. How does uh, today's squad compare with the others that you've been with that have reached playoffs, reached finals, there is a feeling amongst us supporters that perhaps there's a bit more togetherness, a bit more determination. Is that true? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, it's easy to say that every year you can say it, but, you know, right from when we come back from pre-season, Brian was determined to make that our main goal. He doesn't care what the names were, he was, uh, he was going to make us a squad um, and a tight group of individuals, really. Um, looking at the squad before going into finals, for me personally, I think our pack's got more of an edge now. Um, I think we can, we can compete with anyone really. And maybe looking back in hindsight, we, that's, that's areas where we were dominating in the finals, for me personally. Well, I'd like to thank you both. Just one word before I do though. Um, tonight is the last chance you'll have at a match to vote for player of the season. It's very close at the moment and uh, Andy is up there and I'm not going to allow him a chance to put forward his case. My vote would be But there are, there are
there is a voting box in here, and if you don't get a chance this evening and you haven't voted, then there will be boxes in the ticket office and in reception, up to and including the last day of this month. Voting is very, very close at the moment, so please, if you're a season ticket holder, cast your vote. But for now, can I thank Tim Taylor and Andy Hazel. Thank you both.